Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and checking out my first YouTube video. Uh, it's a time lapse. Um, give me a little grace on this as it's my first one. Um, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions on Prismacolors and uh, just this medium that I've been using since 1996 uh, when my art teacher in high school introduced me to them. But um, anyway, my name's uh, Brian Way Tula. I'm a third generation uh, Oklahoma Cherokee artist. Uh, my grandmother and mother are Cherokee treasures with uh, in basketry, but uh, mine came out lopsided, so I decided to pick up drawing. Um, and finished uh, my 13th year in education, uh, teaching 6th grade to uh, 12th grade, uh, some advanced art um, in high school. So I uh, stepped away so I could do uh, my art professionally. Uh, and I do some national shows uh, with my Native American works, um, like the Indian Market in Santa Fe. And uh, I've done works for uh, various professional uh, athletes, um, some of their organizations, charities, raising funds. Uh, I've worked with Russell Westbrook before. Um, he signed a piece of my artwork similar to this. And then uh, Dallas Keuchel, when he was with the uh, Astros, um, Archie Bradley of the Diamondbacks, uh, Sam Bradford's signed a, a, P, a drawing that I've done, uh, Bob Stoops, and uh, being a University of Oklahoma alumni, it's kind of how I came in contact with some of those guys, and um, just being uh, living in the athletic dorms, those guys uh, would come over um, after practice or just whenever to hang out and see me working and, you know, ask me to do stuff for their girlfriends, for Christmas presents or family, and you know, get a couple autographs here and there, and, you know, it was fun to watch them uh, kind of just have an interest in what I do, but um, <clears throat> mainly kind of putting this up so you can see my process going from main center of interest, which is the face, you know, you want to work and make sure you get that absolutely correct um, before you start branching outward, and then I work on all the skin tones, um, work my way out to the hands. Uh, usually I'll have a piece of paper under my hand, but I just make sure to keep it everything clean, uh, constantly erase or pick up with a kneaded eraser, any uh, shavings that I have, um, try and blow it off. But, um, you know, you notice some of the pictures I'm working from, crops on everything just to get as much detail as possible. Um, what you see me now doing is uh, I'm working on, uh, uh, I guess, just basic poplar wood from like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I've done these before. They just take forever. They're probably about... 40, 50 hours, maybe more. Um, this one's about two foot by four foot. Um, I built the frame and wood on the back side and then put a piece of plywood uh, underneath, uh, nailed that to it, uh, and then uh, squared everything up with these uh, planks, cut them, you know, just anywhere really, and just kind of offset them so it looked like a basketball court. And after everything's done, and I put my clear coat on there. Um, you know, it'll look like a piece from a, an actual court that was cut out, but um, working on detail, you know, um, I've developed over the years my own overlay system on when, what, what colors lay down best and what colors work well to mix with. Um, I try not to use a lot of black just because sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you might have some of those what they call wax blooms or something show up, but when it's sealed on these wooden ones, I never had that problem. Uh, the only problem with wood is the humidity, and in Oklahoma we have tons of it. So you just want to make sure to tell your clients or, you know, I have dehumidifiers in my house and in my art studio, so um, <clears throat> I just try to tell people to just to be aware of the humidity and everything. And uh, I seal these up with uh, an acrylic, um, I think it's a polycrylic, um, that I'll put down a couple coats, uh, let that sit, and I seal the back. Uh, and everywhere really just to limit the chances of anything um, happening to the artwork but um, like I said uh, just kind of putting this time-lapse video up so you can just kind of see how I work um, and how everything kind of comes together uh, if you have any questions on you know just materials or um, Prismacolors that I do I, I, I'll have classes I've been getting requests to do classes now uh, and I try with my show schedule now just to try and do uh, about two. I was able to do two last year, um, one in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the other one in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, which is the heart of Cherokee Nation. Um, I'm going to try and expand that to maybe four. 
um, for 2019. But uh, check me out on Instagram. I'll put my information on the bottom of this video and follow me. Um, and I'm pretty reach. I can be reached uh, through that if anybody has any questions on just materials and what to use. Uh, but these these are fun to work on. It's just they I have to have some downtime afterwards just because they require so much detail and I work uh, so close and so long on these. Uh, I take breaks. Um, I actually have some physical therapy breaks or some exercises with rubber bands that I do on my back just to keep my uh, injured shoulder um, <clears throat> from tightening up and having to get those, uh, oh, I don't know, what dry needled, uh, I guess. I've had to have that done a couple times just from sitting for too long hours. So definitely want to make sure you're taking breaks. Um, like I said, this took over maybe 50 hours, 40 something hours uh, into it and definitely have to make sure I take breaks at least every hour. Um, but you see, sometimes I'll have a wider range of pencils depending on what section I'm working on, like as bands, I just worked in grays. Um, so I didn't have to hold as many. Now starting to get into the jersey, I'll end up holding a lot more um, color pencils around. Um, you know, for trim or some dark areas, I'll switch between like using a dark indigo blue like I'm doing right now um, just I, I just try to limit how much black I use in a lot of my drawings uh, try to use the complementary colors um, as well um, to try and um, darken darken the areas or darken the colors but um, definitely when working with wood you you, you don't want to make too many mistakes um, you know doing these since I was in high school I've kind of learned how to do things you know, faster um, but when you lay down on wood you know you have a little give but not much or else you're gonna have to hide or work over or sand it down I made a couple mistakes that you'll see later in the video when I start hand painting um, the type and the logo uh, in the background that um, I had to wait for it to well it, it came outside one of the lines I needed to get it wet and take it back um, then wait for it to dry and then I actually had to sand it down to try and take it away but those are the things you just the tricks you just try and learn and come up with and problem solve um, but uh, this this piece ended up being a, a lot of fun after I finished it I honestly didn't didn't want it to leave my home um, but um, <clears throat> you know doing the typography it goes back to uh, some lessons I, I learned in high school, the exact same lessons I learned in high school. Um, and then when you start to see me do the, the painting, um, just using basic proportion um, and, and freehanding type is, is not very easy because small little thing, you know, um, that's out and you know you'll be able to see it a little bit later I've got a couple like the eight and the nine and and a couple of the other ones uh, numbers or letters might be a little thick or thin in some places um, but again trying to just work um, from the most important sections being his face and then his body parts his hands and then going into his jersey which I've gotten pretty good with fabric so I kind of wait and do those at the very end um, I've done projects when I was younger working from what was easiest which would be the fabric and then getting into the face where it just looked completely horrible and just having to scrap the project so um, <clears throat> and when doing things you know you have access to so many colors um, that are already pre-mixed for you um, <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking about mixing my own with the exception of white um, that I'm laying down now. It took about two coats to get this on there uh, to cover and I just used your basic acrylic craft paint from like Walmart um, or a Hobby Lobby um, and put two coats down so that it would would cover and, and it didn't matter if it was a little transparent. It was kind of neat seeing the wood through that but um, I ended up mixing my own yellow to try and match and I should have just went out and got my you know the closest color uh, to that but unfortunately with paint if you make a little mistake or it comes out a little bit too thick you just gotta wait for it to dry and then just kinda paint over it um, 
so I ended up I wasn't happy with the blue so I ended up going back and uh, touching that up and even the dark blue but this this uh, went a little bit faster um, again I, I was switching between like three or four different brush sizes um, same way when I started doing my type and painting that out but um, just adding a little bit more to the background um, you know kind of make my uh, main subject uh, pop out a little bit more start to create a little bit more depth um, you know and this piece was kind of to uh, you know put in perspective he had three consecutive um, seasons averaging triple doubles and this was part of his 202020 game um, that my client wanted me to add on there so um, you know I had some challenges but uh, again it was it was a lot of fun to work on But again, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to make some comments below or um, find me on Instagram. Um, send me a message through that. You'll see a lot of progressive shots on my Instagram. Um, you know, I do a lot of other things outside. You know, I've done bronze, ceramics, um, pottery, a lot of screen printing in my art studio now. Um, I do my own shirt designs. Um, And then just some giveaways I'll do here and there, uh, either prints or t-shirts, uh, things that I've been working on. And here's some small little tricks I made, you know, just adding some painter's tape down. Um, try and work what's easiest, you know, upside down if I have to, so I'm not reaching all the way across a piece or leaning over onto it. Trying to tape up some of the straight edges so I can just uh, make sure those straight lines are you know perfectly straight uh, to a point the only thing with that painters tape is sometimes you have to make sure on which direction you're painting so that you don't your paint doesn't push up underneath the tape so anyway I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video um, feel free to make me some comments uh, let me know what you think or if you have any questions on Prismacolors um, and uh, just thanks for watching I appreciate it